thank the grace of heaven, the virtues of the masters, and the mercy of the predecessors and transmitters to give me this opportunity to uh, conduct this class. Um, this class is uh, it's, it's just a more in-depth, okay, uh, more, yeah, in-depth, comprehensive, or well, try to make it as without, you know, going over, you know, too deep, you know, beyond most people, okay, so, so of, uh, of what we call, you know, remember we, we mentioned uh, 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 way, way back, I don't know, you know, you know maybe a couple months ago when, I, when we did the first class about the um, Eightfold Paths, right? We talked about the Four Noble Truths, right? And then, you know, I talked about the, uh, the, the Four Great Vows, right? How the four, uh, the four Noble Truths, you know, is linked, right? You know, or, or you can say, you know, uh, gives rise, right, to the uh, four great vows, right? So, so that's, okay, so that's from one perspective, and that is the perspective of sentient beings, right? Right? So, so you know, I, I don't want to go into to, to, to those linkages. I mean, I mean, you should all remember that, right? Right? You know, the, what the four noble truths are, right? Okay, and, and, and I think, you know, it was in one of the, I don't know if we did a handout, but it was in one of the, 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 um, the, doc, the word document that remember that we, we showed I, I showed the four you know the eightfold pass right you know we, okay yeah. so so yeah the you know here, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, yeah just 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 to you know it's, it's a refresher it's a refresher okay so you know the four noble to, you know which is conditioned phenomena right which is the suffering right <clears throat> dukkha now. Okay, yeah, 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 and, and, you know, you have to understand what dukkha means. It just, it doesn't mean just suffering. I mean, yeah, yeah, it does, I mean, and in a very narrow sense, but it means more, okay? So, so and, and it just, it just, you know, it just, it, it's, it's a, now, 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 people may debate, you know, some people may say, oh, you know, life is not suffering, you know, you know, you know, hey, look, look at Trump, you know, he's, you know, he's a billionaire, he's not the president, he can say whatever he wants, tweet whatever he wants, you know, get on people's nerves, doesn't matter, you know, you know, you know, you know, doesn't matter, yeah, so, so, to, that, 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 it's not that, it just means that, what, what, what suffering just means that it's, everything is conditioned, see, that's the key, everything is conditional, you know what I'm saying, conditional, okay, so even if you're, if you, if you're not suffering, let's say you are happy, you, let's say you're, you're enjoying life, you know, you have... It's not 100% of the time. Precisely. It's, it's all conditions. It's, it's the conditions that create that state, you get it? So, but those conditions are always subject to change. That's the problem. So that's why it's Anicca, right? So it's, it, you know, because, okay, but, and then, and then, you know, the, and then, so what is the cause of that dukkha, quote unquote, or, you know, you say, you know, dukkha, you know, we say suffering, or, 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 or dissatisfactoriness, <laughs> or, la, uh, 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 or, uh, um, um, uh, what can I say? Uh, imperfectness or whatever. Okay, it's because there are what you know. We say there are uh, desires, attachments, all that. Or, or you can say ignorance. Okay, all right. Doubts. You know, wrong views. Wrong. You know, doubts, desires, attachments, cravings. You know what things that you like, things that you dislike. See, th those are all, all you can say the causes or the factors that lead to dukkha. Understand? Make sense? Right? Okay. And then, so, okay. So, so that's, the, okay, that's the first two noble truths. Okay, I don't want to go into you know, detail because I don't want to spend too much time. And so, so we say, so now, that's what we call, that, that, those four noble truths are found under what we call the proper view, right? Or the correct view, right? Or the, and that's the most important, right? That's the first uh, noble Eightfold path, right? That's the first of noble. So it all starts from that proper view, or from within, right? From within each one of us, right? Okay. So, so basically, Buddha was trying to say that for us, for us to impart or, or start on the road, on the path towards enlightenment, right? Or to become, you know, to transcend samsara, right? In this case, you have to have that correct view. It's very important. It's, 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 it's. You can say it's the, yeah, it's, it's the core. You can say it's the core. If you don't have that, everything else, the, the, the rest of the seven, uh, uh, eight, uh, seven of the eight noble, you know, eightfold paths, it's useless. You know that? It's useless. Get it? It's very important. 
So that's why he lists the number one. Yeah, it makes sense, right? It makes sense. It's not even concentration. People say, oh, I meditate, I meditate. Well, yeah, you can meditate all you want. I don't care. You can meditate all you want. If you don't have the proper view or proper understanding or proper realization, uh, and uh, not get to say, of what? Okay, I'll I ask that. And that, that. That's what this, hopefully, I'll, I'll go, you know, that, that's what I want to concentrate on. But, but if you don't have any of that, it's useless. You can become an asura. No, you can become an asura. Seriously. An asura does not have a proper view. Why? Don't we know what part of the qualities of a sura is? They have rage or anger. And if that's one of the, one of the desires or cravings, or you can say, you know, desire, yeah, attachments or attachments, they, they still cannot let go of rage or anger or, or whatever, you know, or, or some kind of desire, some kind of desire, whatever, okay, whatever it may be. You end up being an asura. Get it? So we've got to be very careful. You end up in there like a demon. A sura is like a demon. You can say it's like a demon. So we've got to be careful. So, so that's why proper view... And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll lead to the, to, the, to the four immeasurable minds later. I mean, it, this leads into that, okay? So because we do not... If we, you can cultivate all you want. But if you do not have proper view, it's a very dangerous path. You get it? It'll lead to a sura. You know that? Scary, huh? Scary thought. Yeah. So that's why people say, oh, they just focus on, oh, I want to meditate, 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 calm my mind, calm my mind. Yeah, well, if you don't have a proper view, sorry, you're going to end up, you could end up becoming a surah. Get it? So that's why it's dangerous, okay? So, so then we have to say, then what, what is the source, or you can say the core that makes up the proper view, right? right? Then, then, then that's the next step that we want to go into, okay? So, so then, now, um, remember, I already picked, I, I, I uh, well, previously, right, uh, previously, <laughs> so that's why this is, you know, this is an accumulation, okay, this is a culmination, okay, everything is accum cumulative, okay, so, <clears throat> so, remember, um, I had already, you know, talked about the link, right, or the connection between the four noble truths, so, so the four noble truths are not like saying, oh, these, it's a principle, it's not, it's not that, it just means from a Buddha's perspective, not, not from human, not from sentient beings, okay? From a Buddhist perspective, these are like, say, the four matters of fact, or four realities, the four, the four realities of living, of life. That, you know, life is, you know, suffering, that you know, there's, a, there's a cause for that, and then there's a path for that, right? There's a path to do that, and then there is, um, there is, um, uh, 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 there's a way to terminate, right, to end, okay? So, 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 so that's the how. So, so basically the Four Noble Truths talks about the, 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 what, what that, the human condition or the what, which is the condition phenomena, the why, why, you know, why a human condition is such, and uh, how to, get, how to, how to uh, uh, transcend that human condition, if you will, okay, that's the cultivation part, and then the, the fourth truth is, where will it lead? Where does that really, where, where, where does cultivation, where does path will lead to, which is nirvana, okay, that's the real estate, okay, so, so that's what, then, now, from our perspective, that's why I introduced the link, okay, to the Four Noble Truths, so where we go from the Four Noble Truths, the four, what we call, realities of being, of, of ex uh, existence, you can say existence in general, right, remember, I, then we linked it to the four, right, four, um, four, uh, 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 for vows, for great vows, we call it great vows. Now, they're, they're also, the four great vows are also known as bodhisattva vows. And, and there's a reason for that, which, which I, I will touch upon. Right? So we know the four noble truths will lead to the four great vows, right? That, and that's what it is, okay? So it's a little bit down, four great vows is at the bottom of that column, okay? A little bit above it. Uh, you know, the chart, the chart, not, 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 yeah, a little bit, yeah, right there, okay, yeah, in green, yeah, okay, now, now, from a sentient being point of view, we say, oh, okay, because we, if you, let's say, have that proper view, right, if we say we have the proper understanding, proper view, proper understanding of existence, we say, oh, life is suffering, right, so therefore, it goes to the first great vow, which is what, that you want to save all innumerable sentient beings, right, okay, so, so that's the, that is a logical, that's a logical, uh, you can say, consequence or connection, we can say, right? Or conclusion we can draw, right? Right? 
And then the second, second one is what? The cause of that suffering, right? Leads to that. Oh, we have to extinguish them, right? Therefore, we have to extinguish, right? Right? Okay. Makes sense, right? And then, and then, the, okay. Now, let me go to the the fourth. The fourth truth is that we say that oh, there is the, a way, right? A path, right? A path of 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 of, of what? Transcending, right? The suffering and all that stuff, right? Okay. And that's the what? To master. Yeah, to master all the teachings, okay, right? That's how, that's the how, the, the cultivation part, right? And then, uh, then the third one is just, when you, when, when the noble truth, which is says the cessation, right? The end, there's going to be an end. When you, when you can get rid of all these cravings, desires, etc., etc., et it, it leads to what? Nirvana, right? That's the third noble truth. And that's the fourth vow, which is that you will achieve, right? The unsurpassed or incomparable supreme perfect enlightenment, which is what? Right? Buddha, which is Buddhahood, right? right? Or, or we call it what? Anuttara Samya Sampodi, right? Usang Zen 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 Jue, which is Buddhahood, essentially Buddhahood. That's, that means you transcend samsara, period. I mean, forever. Not, not just for one lifetime, but for, for eternity. Eternity, okay? So, so that's the fourth. So we drop, so we say, hey, from the Four Noble Truths, from a sentient point, sentient being point, we say, hey, it makes sense now. We have these four great vows. So that's why we should, okay? But, but here, here's, what I, here's the amazing thing. Now we say, so therefore we humans conclude, say, oh, that's why Buddhas have these, or Bodhisattvas, have these four great vows. Actually, that's not correct, because that's what we're looking at from the human point of view, get it? or sentient being point of view, you can say human sentient being, okay? I, I use that interchangeably, but, but sentient beings really is broader, but it includes animals. Actually, so we have to understand, you know, a lot of definitions and, okay, terms. Sentient beings, okay, the, cur the more accurate uh, 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 or technical definition of sentient beings is anything, any, any living being that has the five skandhas, really. So that includes animals, because animals, have, we say thought, but they have, times they have distinction, right? We may say, we say, se, so, xiang, right? Xiang is the third, right? It just means that they can distinguish. You know, animals can distinguish. They can distinguish between master and non-master, or people who are friendly to them, or people who don't, or they can distinguish that, okay? And then the fourth one is what? Xing, right? Xing, right? The xing means what? Volition. It means intention, volition. Okay, animals have volition. They can say, I want to go from some place that's bad to some place that's good, or some place that's cold, some place that's warm, etc. Animals have volition. They can decide, they can decide, okay? And then the last one is si, right? Which is, we call it consciousness, mind. That means they have, they have, you can say some thought process or some ability to say, now, the highest level is self-awareness. Now, not every animal may be have that at level yet. That's the highest. Highest level of consciousness is self-aware. But they at least recognize that, oh, there is a sense of me and the sense of you. You know what I'm saying? They can distinguish that, right? So that's consciousness. You get it? Okay, so they can, all right? So, so animals have that, okay? Now, people say, well, what about plants? Well, let me ask you. Plants have a form, that's true. And they can have sensation or perception yeah, because plants are subject to either sunlight or even say, oh, you play music. Yeah, so then certain plants will bear more fruit or, or flowers will be prettier or bloom more. Yeah, so they can have perception. You can say perception or, or you know, like sunflower will follow the sun. I say, okay, that's fine. But do they have thought? Can they say, oh, I want to move from point A to point B? No, they can't do that, right? So, so that's why plants... Yeah, go ahead. Hmm? Um, I've had experience where they can. With what? Plants? Mm -hmm. yeah. Plants? Yeah, in the jungle they reach out and they grab you and they pull you into them. No, 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 also, that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah but, it's not, but it's not volition. It's not, a vol it's not an intentional <laughs> act. It's just based on, it's a reaction based on, they sense, the second one, the second, second scan, that they sense something and then they reach out to it or they react to it. So that's different. That's they different. Tree can feel her fruit. When you get a mango yeah, that's sensation. That's sensation. But that's nothing to do and with volition. To a, a monitor where they found a murderer, which was 
Yeah, yeah, but that's nothing to do with volition. Yeah, but that's nothing to do with volition. Volition means intention. That means plants. What plants intentionally want to harm you? No, that, 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 there's no, there's no. That's volition. Get it? You know what volition means, right? Intent. There's an intention, right? Plants have none of that. They just react. There's reacting. Yeah, they can react, but that has nothing to do with volition. Nothing to do with volition. So that's why plants lack the full five skandhas. They may have the first two, maybe even possibly the three, if I can see that. Okay, but definitely no volition. Get it? No volition. You know what volition means, right? Intent. They have an intent to do something. Animals have intent. They have intent. I want to kill you. That's an intention. I want to hunt. I want to go. People say, oh, that's driven by instinct. No, but they still have to have an intent. You see? You get it? Okay? And they can distinguish friend and foe. They can distinguish, oh, you're part of my group, or you're not part of my group. They can distinguish <laughs> that. Plants don't do that. Okay? So, so, so people, you know, they, they like to, you know, whatever. Okay, so, so that's, that's, that's how Buddha views it. Okay, but, but never mind. But that's what really the definition says. So therefore, animals are included. Okay? Get it? So that's why animals are part of sentient beings. Okay? Okay? And that's... And now, now, because, remember what I say about the fifth skanda, the consciousness? Because animals lack that level of self-awareness. That's why animals, animals, even though some animals, they can, let's say, we can say, you know, in Chinese folklore, or, 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 or in different uh, civilizations, they all say, oh, animals can become uh, like... Uh, I don't say gods, but like can become some kind of deity, right? Can become some kind of deity, okay? You know, because they they can uh, you can say they can uh, I don't say cultivate, but they can they can they can yeah 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 yeah. But they cannot be Buddhas, get it? They cannot because they lack that self awareness, and, and and what that self awareness ultimately is the Bodhi mind. But but that's why animals cannot. Directly. directly go to their body mind or, or cannot manifest the body. So that's why animals cannot become Buddhas yet. You get it? So the only way for them to become Buddhas is they have to reincarnate to become a human. Only humans have that. You get it? Because humans, so that's why I, I want to say body mind or, call, or puti xing, okay, body mind. It's the mind of self-awareness of your true Buddha nature. Get it? Animals can't do that. Okay, so that's the difference. You understand? Even though they do, they do have, you can say, a Buddha nature, okay, or essence. We call it the essence. But because they are unable to have that level of self awareness of their Buddha nature, they cannot become Buddhas. You get it? So that's a no and So at best, animals can become, like we say, you know, some kind of, you know, deity, you know, like say, you know, the, you know, like, you know, like the ancient Egyptians would say, oh, there's a, you know, there's a snake god, or there's, you know, you know, something like that. You know, they can become, you know, like, you know, still in the celestial realm, okay, but they're not Buddhas. Okay, get it? All right? Okay, so, so you know, or dragons, you know, whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right, so, so then what is that Buddha nature? What is that? Or, or you know, the, te, the, the Sanskrit term is called bodhisattva. Bodhisattva? Yeah, bodhisattva. Yeah, that's the bodhi mind. So, puti sing, that's how. Okay, so, we all have it. But remember, I was not, not, so, so what is Bodhi mind? How is it related to the four vows, four great vows? Well, actually, from a Buddha's perspective, see, Buddha does not say, do not say he look, they look at the four, you know, four noble truths in this case, you know, we were talking about four, four noble They do not say, oh, because humans, life is suffering, because existence is suffering. So therefore, I vow, Buddha vow, to say, I want to save all sentient beings. You get it? Oh, you, you understand? So, see, we humans would look at it that way. That's the human perspective. Buddhists actually don't do it that way. Because then that means there's a cause for that vow. Right? Right? There's a cause for that vow. Yeah, because Buddha see suffering, so therefore Buddha say, oh, okay, I want to save all sentient beings. Or, Buddha, right? Or, oh, there's too, there, uh, uh, the cause of suffering is due to afflictions, passions, ignorance, so therefore I vow to what? To extinguish all those afflictions. See, humans look at it that way, right? We, so we go from, it's, we go from, the, it, that's the, well, uh, I want to go to technical, that's the inductive approach. We say, we go from, we say, facts or experience lead to what? 
a principle, or we say a conclusion. We draw a conclusion from those facts or principles. We say, oh, we, therefore we conclude. That's the four gate See, Buddhists don't do it that way. You understand? And so, so the key is why. How, how, why and how? It's because Buddhas have what? Supreme bodhicitta, or that supreme, they have, they, they, they reach a supreme level of, we could say, enlightenment, enlightened mind. Get it? That's the Buddha mind, okay? That's the Buddha. It's hard to describe because, because, we, because we're not at that level. So it's hard to, to kind of like, you know, grasp that, 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 that notion, okay? Or that, 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 okay. So then, what is that? enlightened or supreme enlightened mind or or you know consciousness whatever you want to call it okay it it has to do something to do with what we call the four immeasurable minds now that this is a tough um it's it's a it's a very on the surface the four immeasurable minds on the surface and then, which we will talk about because we didn't talk about it that much right in in, in when, when i gave when we did the for uh the uh the Eightfold Paths. Um, it, it, it's the four immeasurable minds. Another, a simple way to look at it is nothing more than the external or the manifestations of the supreme enlightened mind. Make sense? And, when, and so, so that the supreme Bodhi mind. You know, that's, remember I say Bodhi mind has many levels, and, and, and which, which I'll, I'll, I'll go into more detail. The Puti Shin. Okay, so we say, okay, at the highest, highest level, the, 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 the absolute, you can say the ultimate level of the Bodhi mind, Supreme Bodhi mind, is basically what we call enlightened mind of the Anuttara Samyaksam Bodhi, okay, of a Buddha. That's the Buddha. So that's why on this diagram, I, I have that, that column, what's that, column I, that's the Buddha mind, Buddha view, Buddha vision, and Buddha body. You get it? Okay, so, so it's, it's hard to describe what are the qualities of it, of a Buddha mind. Actually, if you want to be more, quote-unquote, accurate, right, it's really the tathata. It's suchness. It just is. I, I, I can't explain it. I mean, we cannot explain it. Just is. Just is. Okay? That's the thusness. What do you call that? Thusness, mm-hmm. suchness. That's the tathata. Actually, the Buddha mind is that. It's just tathata. It's that oneness. You get it? Oneness. It's something that we cannot... It's, now, that oneness means, I don't mean the singular one, that, oh, everything is one, one, you know, it's a singular. Don't, don't, don't because then that's dualistic. Don't, don't view it that way. What I mean by oneness, or thusness, or suchness, or ru si, right? Ru lai, ru si, is, means that, it just means that it is absolute, not in the, in the dualistic sense, but in the sense that there is no duality. No, no, it's dimensionless. Get it? Dimensionless. That means there's, it's, and, and, I, and I think I, I did I, uh, I think, I thought I showed it on column G, which says it's, eh, one way to describe it, this is one way to describe it, is that it's, it's called, it's the, what? The, well, where the heck, is it column G? Where the heck is it? Oh yeah, it's it's non-attached, it's unperturbed, non-dualistic, and dimensionless. Okay, that that's what it is. Uh, maybe it's not there. I, I I don't know. Okay, so so that's that oneness, or 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 from one way to view it, it's the the union, <laughs> the unity of what we call principle and wisdom. Okay, that that's one way to view it. Okay, that oneness. It just is. And it's absolute. It's eternal. It's it has. It just exists. It just is. Okay. You don't, there's no. It has no. It, you can say it's essence. It's the essence. It has no. It's independent. It has no. It's not subject to any condition. Get it? Not subject to any condition. So it's unconditioned. That's why I said it's non-conditioned, unconditioned, dimensionless. It's not subject to time or anything. It just is. Okay. So that's really. The Buddha mind, you can say Buddha mind, Buddha vision, etc. Buddha view, okay? But, so it's very, something is very abstract. It's very abstract, it's hard. But, what are its manifestations of that? Of that? What are the qualities, you can say, some of the qualities of that oneness? You get it? Or that suchness, that thusness. 
and that's what we call the four immeasurable minds, or boundless. Okay, so that means it's limitless. You can say it's limitless. It's, it's eternal. You can say it's that. Okay, or absolute. Yeah, you can say. All right. So that's what we call the some of the traits that you know that we can use to describe that that oneness Buddha mind or whatever you want to call it. Okay, it's the it's the four immeasurable minds. And what are the four immeasurable minds? Oh, it, it, it's uh, Buddha mentioned it. It's called the Brahma Vihara. That's the technical term, but that's that's okay. Or the, it's called the sublime. I think I, I already listed it in there. It's called the sublime abidings, uh, abidings or divine abodes. You know, all, all that. Okay, all right. It's 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 different. Okay, so what are they? It's there are four, you can say, qualities that we describe them, okay? It's the loving kindness, right, or infinite loving kindness, boundless compassion or mercifulness, okay, or willingness to suffer, yeah, for others, yeah, interesting, okay? And uh, you can call it um, infinite joy and happiness, or happiness, joy. It's really, uh, or if you want to go into more detail, it's infinite empathetic joy. Happiness uh, for others, empath em empathy. empathy. It's like empathetic. It's called empathetic happiness or joy. Okay, so it's not selfish. Okay, it's not. It's not limited to the I. Okay, all right. And then there's what we call uh, limitless equanimity. Okay, equanimity. Okay, and then we'll, we'll go into details. Okay, now these four traits or qualities we say hey those are human those are very you know those are like human traits it's it's true it's true because those are just manifestations but here's the difference these four traits what we call or qualities or characteristics of the bodhi mind the supreme bodhi mind or the thusness or whatever suchness has these two key uh, 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 aspects one is what Wei, or non-motive, or non-conditioned. You can say it's non-conditioned. See, when we people, when we describe happiness in the in the human level, it's conditioned. Remember, I say it's conditioned. Oh, because either oh I receive something, or either you know, uh, you know people compliment me or something like that. So therefore, I feel happy. You get it, right? It's like that, right? It's conditioned. If there's a cause that led to a, a certain state. Or people curse me out, so I feel bad, I feel sad, or I feel angry, right? Like that, okay? Those are conditioned. Whereas a Buddha's, these four immeasurable minds, those four quote unquote qualities, have these aspects, unconditioned. It just is. Remember I said? It just is, right? Remember? It just is. That's one part, okay? That's one aspect. What's the other aspect? No I. Yeah, it's, it's, it's non dualistic. Non-dualistic, subject-object, right? It's non-dualistic, so it's hard. It's hard. So, so from a human point of view, when I say, "Oh, I'm happy," it's me. I am happy, and you are sad. You get it? Or you are happy. You get it? It's this subject-object duality. You get it? Bodhi mind, Buddha mind, the supreme Bodhi mind does not have that distinction. Very interesting, huh? It's very, so that's, that's why it's very hard to grasp. Because we are all so used to saying, there's a me, there's a you, right? There's an us, there's a they. So I'm happy, you're happy. Or I'm sad, or you're sad, or I'm happy, you're sad, or I'm sad, you're happy, right? There's always that dualistic uh, uh, underpinning or aspect to our viewpoints or to our whatever, feelings, thoughts, etc., etc., right? right? So, so, so it's very hard to grasp, say, wow, a Buddha mind, a supreme Bodhi mind, has, it's non-conditioned, no condition, okay, no condition, and yet it's non-dualistic. It's very hard, right? Very hard. So those four qualities are those have those aspects. Get it? Make sense? Now that so so now we kind of have an idea. You can say we have a uh, a, a basis uh, a, 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 of a manifestation of now these are all external, right? These are external manifestation of that oneness, right? That's something that we can't describe within, right? That, that, that with, that's the essence of what a Buddha's quote-unquote mind or consciousness is. So from those four, four immeasurable minds, guess what? It leads directly to 
the four great vows. Make sense? Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to get at is that the the Buddhas or Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva has that too. It's Bodhi, It's called the Bodhisattva vows. Okay, because it, it's for everybody. That that's why right. that's why right. it's universal. That's why they call it Bodhisattva. Okay, it's those four great vows that all Bodhisattvas and Buddhas make. It's not because oh they see that there's a four noble truths, so therefore they make the vows. Understand? It's because it comes from, it's their, you can say it's, it's part of, you can say it's part of, or it's intrinsic of the four immeasurable minds that leads to the four great vows. Make sense? So the first immeasurable mind of what? Well, well see, I, I didn't list it in one. It's the uh, infinite... Uh, yeah, no, it should be uh, loving kindness. See, that's wrong. Kind of this, you don't have the latest one. Uh, the four immeasurable minds. It's really, mind? yeah, see, it sh- you don't have this. See, it should be infinite loving kindness. Yeah. Yeah. Leads to what? The first great vow. The, the, to put into action. See, the vow can be, think, can be thought of what? An action. You get it? Because what good is a vow if you don't do it? <laughs> it's useless. Understand? Mm-hmm. So from the four immeasurable minds, which is just say, you can say it's a quality, right? It's an innate quality, right? Of, of a Buddha mind, right? It leads to an action. You get it? So it's just, see, see Tai, you don't have the latest. It should be this. It's the, yeah, sorry, that, that's not the latest. Yeah, this is my latest one. Right? You I, never gave it to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I emailed it to him. But anyway, yeah. it, uh, so, so from, from the first immeasurable mind, which is what? Infinite loving kindness. We call it loving kindness. Okay? Leads to the first great vow. Automatically. When, when you put it into action. Right? Buddha have inf- Buddhas have infinite love and, and kindness for everybody. They don't distinguish, remember, you and I. So, naturally, what is an extension or to put that into action or practice, you can say, to put it into motion of that first immeasurable mind. It's to what? to deliver all sentient beings from suffering. Make sense? Make sense? That, that's, that's infinite love. That's infinite kindness. You get it? And then the second one, which is boundless compassion or mercifulness, is to what? Leads to, directly to the second great, second great power, which is what? To extinguish all afflictions, all suffering. Because they have that mercifulness, that they are willing to suffer. You get it? Willing to suffer. Bei, that's the Bei, right? Bei, the first one's Tsi, right? The second one's Bei, means willing to, That's why Jesus died on the cross. Get it? It's not because, oh, I see people are hopeless, so I'll die for all your sins. No, it's nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. that that's, so, that's so contrived. Get it? It's, so, so what I'm trying to say is that the four immeasurable minds are, you can say another way to describe this, uncontrived. Make sense? That means it's non-conditioned, or it has no uh, uwe. You can say uwe, same thing. Contrived means that you have a what? A reason, right? Uh, a reason to do something, right? You, you, know, you decide to do something, right? You have a reason. Uh-uh. Okay? So that's the second, uh, second, qual- uh, the second uh, immeasurable line leads directly to what? The second great vow. Make sense? Make sense? Right? You see the connection? Okay, now let's go to the, thir- uh, well, what's the third or fourth? I mean, it just, I, I, it doesn't need to, I, you know, we don't need to, and, and the reason why I enumerate is because it's easier, easier. That, that's all. We, I mean, Buddha didn't really say, you know, say one, two, three, four. He just lists four qualities, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what order, okay? So, so, uh, so I talked about infinite loving kindness and then boundless compassion and mercy, okay? That leads directly to those first, those two great vows, right? The first one is what? To deliver or save all sentient beings, right, from suffering. The second one is to extinguish all suffering or afflictions, right? Okay, all right? And then the third one, I talk about limitless equanimity. Now, this, this is a very key phrase, equanimity. Equanimity, okay, you know, on the surface, it just means equal, no, dif- no distinction. That, that, that's, that's true, too. To go into more specific detail, it, it has these three qualities, all right? Three qualities? Yeah. The broadest of which is relinquishment. That means to let go, to give up, right? To let go. That means no attachment. That means yeah, relinquishment. It means non-attachment. 
right? Close, okay? Second one is what? Renunciation. That means you don't um, have any, um, how, can, how can I say, any, yeah, it's attachment too. It just means you don't hold on. You don't cling to any, any, uh, anything. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. But renunciation, more, more, more specific, it just means cling to any ideas or notions or status or you know, that type of thing, okay? All right? And then the third quality is abnegation, which is what? Letting go of ego or the four forms. Get it? The four forms, right? We all know what the four forms are, right? Because I, I, I listed here, no four images. Mm. It go above it. The four images. Yeah, right? The four images. Okay? The ego, personality, being, and life. Right? Okay? That's a si xiang. Okay? So that's called abnegation. Now, the renunciation type, if you move down a little bit, down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No ten lives. You renunciate. You don't, you don't live. You don't have... And also, clear. No three minds and no ten lives. That's the renunciation part. That's get it? That's the renunciation. That's not the abnegation. That's the renunciation. Or you can say relinquish. Okay, relinquish. All right? Relinquish is just broad. Okay, too broad. You get it? No ten lives, no three minds. That means what? Past, present, and future. You get it? Ren you renounce that. You don't say, oh, I hope in the future I want to be this. You get it? See, so you're clinging to something. You get it? You're clinging to something. So, in the future, I want to be a Buddha. That's wrong too. Buddha would say, that's wrong. <laughs> okay? He said that in the Diamond Sutra, okay? To Shibuti. All right? So, oh, in the past, I, 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 I have nostalgia for the past. Those are the good old days, you know. Everything was so nice back then. Now today, it's, everything's, you know, down the tubes, right? See, you still have that three lives, uh, three, heart, uh, three minds and ten lives. You get it? So that's, you renounce that. You get it? You don't cling to it. Oh, attach. You can say attach, but you get it? So that's really what equanimity, equanimity means. Understand? So that's why I put it in the same column because, you know, it, they share, they're linked, okay? So that's what, now, what does that, what does the equanimity, what does this infinite equanimity have to do with the, 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 the four great vows? Well, well, let me ask you, what is the whole point or the key, you can say the foundation of all the dharmas? Equanimity, it's to relinquish, right, relinquish, no four images. No I. You get it? No attachments. You get it? So that's why, how come you need, that's how come you can master all the immeasurable dharmas. Make sense? No, actually, that, that corresponds to the fourth one. No, 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 no. The fourth one is happy joy. The fourth one is happy joy because that's a state of nirvana. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, economy is too. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> they're, they're overlaps. They're overlaps. I agree. I agree. But they're overlaps. But, but, but it leads to the because, no, because the cornerstone, the foundation of all the dharmas, yeah, you can say happy joy is part of it, but, but it's not, it's, it's the idea of relinquishment. That means the idea you have to let go. Get it? Let go. Just, there's no I, there's no three minds, there's no ten lives, none of that. You just have to relinquish all of that. Diamond Sutra sums it up very, very well, okay? So, so if you want to, uh, no, it sums it up very well. No dharma, not even a dharma. <laughs> Not even attachment to a dharma. Get it? Okay. So, so that's relinquishing. That's that's. So, if you want to master, you have to. It comes from that relinquishment, that equanimity. Okay. So, with that equanimity, then you can master all the dharmas. Understand? So, you have to have that equanimity, that that the mind of equanimity, or the you know that the immeasurable mind. Okay. okay? Then the then the last one, that happy joy, right? That we call it happy joy. I call it. We call it. Infinite happy joy. Now, this happy joy is not, remember I say it has no self, right? it's the happy joy which is that state of where it's for everyone, everybody. It's the state of that's unperturbed, undisturbed. I get it? Unperturbed, undisturbed, okay? Un, un, undisturbed, unconditioned, non conditioned, okay? And what is that? That is nirvana state of nirvana. Get it? That's the state of not. That's the fourth vow. Or to, to achieve the incomparable, sur, uh, uh, unsurpassed, perfect enlightenment. Understand? That's so, because why? 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 Why is that so happy joy? Why is that so happy joy? Now, this happy joy, 
Don't look at it in terms of, oh, I'm, I, I feel very happy, I don't have anger. Yeah, yeah, that, that's part of it. But another way to, another way, another aspect, another side, another side, if you will, it really means liberation. Total liberation. Yeah, you can say equanimity is liberation too. But when I say liberation, meaning what? You transcend samsara. Get it? Transcend samsara. That's, isn't that nirvana? Isn't that anuttara samya sambodhi? Okay? So that's the happy joy part. You get it? It's happy joy for everybody. That's why that's what the vow says. You want to what? Have everybody achieve that Anuttara Samya Sambodhi or the unsurpassed, supreme, perfect enlightenment. Because all sentient beings are the same, right? We're all the same, right? There's no remember there's no from the equanimity part which there's no you and I, right? You and I we're all we can say one, I mean you wanna call it that, okay? Okay? So that's the happy joy. You get it? So that's why the four immeasurable minds lead directly to... Because the four immeasurable minds, you can say, oh yeah, those, that's just a trait. You can say that's a characteristic, a trait. But when you put that into action, all right, into practice, which all Buddhas have to do, right? all Buddhas do, it lead, they lead to the four great vows. Make sense? So that's why the Buddha's vows... In this case, we talk about vows come from their Buddha mind, the Bodhi mind, the supreme Bodhi mind. Make sense? It comes from that within. It comes from that within, that essence, not from the outside, not from external conditions. Get it? Get it? Right? Make sense? Okay. So that's why another reason why all Buddhas, or all, all Bodhisattvas, same thing. Okay, have those four great vows. Make sense? They're the same, or variations, you know, they, 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 do, they do variations, uh, but it's, it's all based on the four gate vow. Understand? Make sense now? So that, that now, now you understand why the four gate vows are linked to the four immeasurable minds? Now, I want to get to the Bodhi mind, because it all starts from within. Get it? Within our Bodhi mind. So that's why we have to, so that's why when I say, you know, uh, and let, let, let me describe, there are different levels of Bodhi mind too, in general. I mean, some schools, some different branches of Buddhism, you, you know, have say, oh, there are 50 levels or whatever. I mean, so many different levels. Uh, so, and some generalize say there are three basic categories. Okay, n n n I don't want to get into those details. It's not important. But just understand there are different levels. So as we, when we are cultivating, right, start learning about Buddha nature class, right, right, it's really the, you can say, the beginning stages of being awakened to our body mind. You understand? Okay? That's the Ming Xing Jian Xing part. Okay? Okay? But we haven't reached the highest level yet, like the mind of a Buddha. Okay? That, okay? That's totally unconditioned, uh, 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 non dualistic, unperturbed. That's not. But at the beginning level, we can, we, we can, we can, I, I, I'm gonna uh, give you a, 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 an example. Okay? So let's say at the starting level, which all of us should be in. Okay? It's like, I like him to, to like say it's a king. Let's say a king who's mainly concerned with self, you know, with individual, you know, uh, 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 enhancement, or, or you know, you can say you know, self-interest. You can say self-interest. But but the king also realizes that his personal self-interest is also subject to, or con or well-being. You can say well-being is subject to what? How his subjects are. How his subjects are, you know, right? The, the, the welfare of his subjects. So, so it's more self, it's, main, it's more self because the, the king is only interested, you know, I'm saying it's only interested, it's mainly interested in his own personal, his own personal gain. You get it? Right? 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 But he understands that it's tied indirectly to the welfare of his subjects or the, let's say, the state of his kingdom. You get it? Okay? So that's the first level. So we, are the, so we still have that self, notion of that self. Get it? Okay? Or that distinction of you know, subject-object. Get it? Okay? The four forms, right? Or images. Now, then the next level, the higher level, think of it as like a, um, and I'm talking about the Bodhi mind, right? Okay, the Bodhi mind. Think of it as like, say, a boatman, a boat captain, whatever. See, the boat captain what, carries passengers, right, from point A, or from one shore, one side, to the next shore, right, to the, across the shore. So, 
he his action, this boat captain's action, benefits people, right? But he also benefits himself. Get it? Get it? Right? So that's the next step. The more, the little higher level, you can say. Then what's the highest level? Think of it this way. I'm talking to the Bodhi mind, okay? The shepherd. Oh, remember Psalms 23? I think that's the Lord's prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. No, I shall not want. Or something. I forgot. I forgot. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But thou leadest me to green pastures and waters. Whatever, 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 whatever. Okay, all that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful psalm. It's one of the most quoted. I think Psalms 23. Okay, but anyway. You usually say that in yeah. funerals. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't matter. No? But, but think of it as a shepherd. What does that mean? Like a good shepherd, he, the shepherd cares for his flock of sheep and places the welfare of the sheep above his. Oh, that's, wow, that's the higher level. You get it? That's what a Buddha is like. You, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm making a comparison, but I'm trying to describe Buddhas, okay? Buddha doesn't care about their own welfare because there's no distinctions from yeah, but they care. They want to make sure that all, all the sheep, in this case, all sentient beings, all human beings, are also enlightened. Get it? Can transcend. So that's like a shepherd. I'm using a metaphor, okay? I mean, that, you know, it's not 100%, but, but you know, at least you get an idea. You get? So that's the highest, quote-unquote, Bodhi mind. So what I'm trying to get at is everything that we do, so from, from, from our perspective, since we're learning about the Buddha nature, it's we want to reach that level, that, Buddha, that Bodhi mind level of like the shepherd, I'm saying, that everything comes from there. You get it? Not from our conscious mind, because our conscious mind is what? It's illusory. It's not lasting. It's not internal. It comes and goes. Our thoughts, our conscious thoughts come and go, right? At this second, we have this thought. Another minute, it's another thought. That, so that's not the true mind of our Buddha nature. Our Buddha nature is the Bodhi mind. That's unconditional, right? Non-dualistic, right? So think of it like a shepherd. You only, they only, they only care, I would say they only care. They care about all the, the welfare or well-being of all the flock and not themselves. Get it? Okay? So, so, so what I'm trying to say is whatever we do, we should always approach it from the Bodhi mind. Not so, so, so we say, oh, look at the refugees. Oh, they're so sad. Because we see pictures of them, so we feel sad. That's human. That's human. That's a human mind. Get it? Buddha mind. No, they already feel compassion, regardless of whether they heard it or not, because actually they see everything. But, but you get it? They, all right? So that's the difference. Understand? So one is one way, the other one is the other way. Understand? Okay, so that's, that's why we... Uh, I, I, I want to get deeper, but, but since I don't have time, we can save it for, for later, for a future date. But I want to get to the... The uh, internal. See, these are all external now. I'm talking about external. The four, the four great vows, right? We talk about external. That's linked to the four immeasurable minds from the external point. Then there's an internal piece of the four great vows. You know that? There's an internal piece, and that has to do with the body mind too. But but that's that's why I, I want to talk about body mind. So it's very important to understand what the body mind is. Okay? So 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 wh whatever we study or we learn, right, about the Buddha dharmas or the dharmas teachings, try not to use the conscious mind. Yes, in, in the beginning you have to, you have to. But ultimately, the highest level is that Bodhi mind. Understand? Okay, so, so I want to go into that, and, and that's why we, go, you know, I, you know I, I don't have time, but there's the internal aspect of the 4K vow. What, what we're stating right now is all the external aspect. Yeah, that's the practice. You can say, yeah, it carries out. But there's also, that's only the external aspect. There's an internal aspect too, okay? So, so, and that, that has, that's the, that's the essence of what we call the Bodhi mind, the Supreme Bodhi mind, okay? So, so, so I have to leave it at that. We'll, we'll talk, we'll, we can talk about that in the future. Thank you very much.